Hello again, everybody. I'm Bronson Vanderbeer, and welcome to another edition of The Bear Facts. Um, i got to admit, being in Florida does have its advantages, um, especially in the wintertime. But lately, I felt like W.C. Fields when he said, I'd rather be in Philadelphia. Uh, that's because back on February 21st, a one-of-a-kind event took place when dozens of mascots from all walks of life uh, representing schools, businesses, community groups, even pro sports teams. Uh, they all gathered at the Palestra on the University of Pennsylvania to raise money to fight childhood cancer and perhaps set a world record in the process. Uh, this event was spearheaded by a group called Mascots for a Cure. And we are very fortunate to have as our guest today, joining us via video link, the founder of Mascots for a Cure, Mr. Derek Zinser. Derek, how you doing today? Good, how are you, sir? I'm just fine, thank you very much. So, uh, welcome to the Bear Facts, and um, I guess I should also say welcome home. Because uh, yes. the day we're taping this, you uh, you just recently returned to uh, to your home base in Oregon there. I did, yeah. I just right, can you describe how the last two weeks have been for you? I'm sure it was a, a veritable whirlwind of emotions for you. It was pretty exciting. It's definitely one of the best trips I think I've ever been on, being able to experience Philadelphia and New York. Uh, to be around all these mascots that are coming together for one common cause and one common fight, you know, fighting back against childhood cancer. It was a pretty emotional, pretty neat experience to uh, be a part of all of this. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, so what exactly is Mascots for a Cure? Uh, what do you guys do and how do you do it? Yeah, so Mascots for a Cure, we try to bring mascots together from really all over the nation uh, to have a common cause and a common fight to fight back against childhood cancer. Uh, so we usually do that through pretty big events. Uh, the biggest event that we do um, is an annual event, and that's obviously the Guinness Book World Record. Uh, we're thinking about maybe, you know, changing that every single year to do something different every year. So we keep it nice and fresh. What gave you the idea to uh, to try that? Now, this isn't the, um, this wasn't the largest gathering of mascots we're talking here, but the, uh, the largest mascot dance, I believe it was? Exactly. Yeah, I've tried the largest uh, gathering of mascots for three years. It's a very difficult record to break. Uh, someday we'll break that. Uh, we're not going to give up. Figured cancer patients don't give up, so we're not either. Uh, so we'll continue to, to try for that record. But we definitely wanted to walk away with at least one uh, Guinness Book World Record, which is why we tried the largest mascot dance. Well, honestly, the immediate coverage of this event has been uh, has been pretty uh, pretty noteworthy. Um, of course, the local media in Philadelphia covered it. But uh, apparently the report has also got some legs. It uh, wound up in uh, South Carolina, even down here in Florida. I uh, even saw that MSNBC picked it up, and they showed it. Yeah, they showed it on the uh, the gas station pumps all across the all across the country here. Exactly, which is pretty neat. I mean, we definitely knocked it out of the ballpark as far as the awareness goes. Uh, we could definitely fine tune a few things for next year to make it better mm -hmm. and bigger, to where we're actually raising a lot of money for uh, some of these organizations that we're teaming up with. All right. So, uh, so tell us a little more about the event. Uh, how many mascots showed up this year? Uh, but we right. had 139 total mascots. Uh, one ended up not participating uh, for certain reasons, but we so we, we ended up with 138. All righty. You said you had more on standby, but not enough people to wear them. Yes, we actually had a, probably about 60 to 70 more mascots on standby. Wow, really? Uh, yeah, we just had a kind of a hmm. tough time um, recruiting volunteers from across the nation. So we're going to try to fine tune that too and make All it right. better for next year. Well, we'll tell you this. We have a lot of mascot performers and mascot fans who watch this show. So hopefully we can get them into oh, this as well. So, um, so how did you become a fan of mascots to begin with? I mean, what, why do they, why are they so awesome to you? Yeah, well, honestly, it started with the, the Capital One mascot challenge. Um, I was the entertainment chair for the Eugene Springfield Relay for Life, which uh, back then was the number three relay in the in the entire world um, in size and the amount of money raised. Uh, everybody knows how serious cancer is and how horrible it is. Right. So I kind of wanted to provide a, a lighter side to it. So it started with mascots. Uh, made one call to the Eugene Emeralds in Sluggo. He said yes. Uh, called the Duck. He said yes. It just kept on going from there. Uh, so the first year we actually had 16 mascots attend Relay for Life before Mascots for Cure even really uh, started and was created. And it was a huge hit. Well, so it all started from there and it just snowballed into what it is today. Exactly. Uh, until recently with this Philadelphia event, just seeing all the media coverage and all the hype and everybody getting excited and just the momentum behind it. It's starting to, um, I feel like God's kind of speaking to me and letting me know that I need to start focusing more on Mascots for a Cure because it is my true passion and right. kind of start uh, dropping off some of these other events that I'm doing that focus on Mascots for a Cure. You know, I will tell you this, you have a very strong foundation. It can only get better from here, man. 
Exactly. And um, something else that happened this weekend, which I know you were very happy about, um, Mascots for a Cure now has its own official mascot, doesn't it? And, uh, yeah, we do. Thanks. So, to, I, so uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Sir Roland Braveheart and uh, what he represents and how he came to be. Definitely. So I wanted a mascot. I've been wanting a mascot, obviously, for geez, the last two to three years. I figured Mascots for a Cure should probably have its own mascot. Uh, so we were lucky to connect with Glen Street and Street Characters, Inc. Um, up in Canada. And they were willing to be able to work with us in Mascots for a Cure. Yes. How did you decide on the name Sir Roland Braveheart? Uh, it's actually something kind of my mom came up with. I wanted to try to combine. I wanted my dad to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. um, his middle name is Harland, so that's where the land came part of it. And my mm -hmm. mom's name is Robin. So it kind of combined Row for Robin and Land for Harland. Um, Sir, I wanted it to be a... Uh, a bear that was a knight. I mean, and it has a shield that has our logo, which is also a shield. Um, and that kind of resembles protecting kids and shielding from cancer. Um, he also has a sword. So he's a knight bear uh, to kind of protect kids from cancer. Yeah, a protector and a fighter. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and I know it, uh, it does have a, the cancer does have a personal because it did affect your father, didn't it? Yeah, I unfortunately lost my dad on New Year's Day in 2009. Oh, wow. Uh, which is, is my true motivation. I mean, I have all, a few other people that have lost to cancer, friends and aunts, um, mm -hmm. grandparents. So it definitely affects everybody, uh, no matter what your race is, religion, sex, doesn't matter. But yeah. uh, hopefully with the stuff you're doing and with the money that's being raised and the research that's being done, we won't have to worry about this problem for much longer. Yeah, that would, that would be nice. We're teaming up with some really nice organizations like the Children's Hospital of uh, Philadelphia, CCA. Mm -hmm. You know, Mascots for Cure will never have a team of scientists or researchers. So that's why we're kind of a, the vehicle to raise money through Mascots so that we could donate to organizations that do have researchers and do have scientists to be able to find a cure for cancer. Okay. Do you have any like, special memories or uh, special people you've met that you reflect back on them and they remind you, this is why I do this? Oh, it's... Honestly, it's just about every mascot I meet, and I'll, I'll say this, you know, some people might think that mascots, they, they don't really fully understand them, but ma these mascots, whether they're a pro team, semi-pro team, business, or just a, uh independent mascot, they have the biggest hearts and the biggest passion for what they do, mm -hmm. and bringing smiles to people's faces of all ages. Mm -hmm. They truly have the biggest heart for what they do. Yeah, that is true. It all starts from the inside, it works its way out. Exactly. Yep. And, it, and if it has to find its way through a thick layer of fur, sometimes that's even better. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I know about thick layers of fur. Um, what uh, what is um, what are we to have coming in the future here from Mascots for a Cure? Um, I know you've been teasing a couple of really big announcements lately. Yeah, we, we're going to be doing the uh, Starlight Parade with the Portland Rose Festival right. uh, this June. Uh, so we're going to have a float to that that has 325,000 people. Uh, so it's definitely an awareness thing, but we're also trying to turn it into a fundraiser. Uh, there's something that we're working with or working on with uh, the Be Positive Foundation, which I believe is in Delaware, uh, potentially Alex's Lemonade Stand Foundation. Okay, I've heard of them, yeah. <clears throat> so we're going to, we're trying to get approval for a, a certain song and trying to create a uh, kind of a, a challenge like the Ice Bucket, uh, ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. Oh, that should uh, be interesting. Involving, yes, but involving dance and mascots. Huh. So we I have quite a few people who I know quite a few people who are going to be in on that challenge once they see it. <laughs> I guarantee it. All right. So if uh, people want to know more about uh, mascots for a cure, uh, like what you're up to or how to, they can get involved, um, where can they go to find more info about you? Uh, definitely on our Facebook page, uh, just mascots for a cure. Twitter at mascots for a cure. Instagram, uh, we post often mm -hmm. on that. And then of course our website, uh, just mascots for a cure. Uh, dot org. And donations are always welcome, correct? Of course, yes. And that's definitely one of the main reasons we're going to be doing this next huge thing. Uh, that's uh, our own Mascots for a Cure type challenge. Uh, that's with, with dancing with the mascots and dancing with humans. That's to raise as much money as we can. All righty. So um, I might be a little bit premature, but um, do you know, I, I, is there going to be a 2017 version of the world's largest dance? Um, I think so, yeah. We're, we're probably going to try for the largest gathering as well. Um, Alrighty. That's probably the, the big daddy of them all, the granddaddy of them all, the one I really want to meet. Uh, so we'll definitely try for that, and we'll just keep on building off this momentum uh, and, and probably do a different type of dance, at least a different song. All right. 
Well, like I said, you have some good word of mouth going, and this last year I think is going to be the launching point. So, I, I really, love it. I, I, I really so. expect to see. I, I expect if not to, if you don't break it this coming year, I expect you to come very close to it. Yes, and I, I trust agree. you. We here at the show are going to do everything we can to get the word out about it as well. I really appreciate it so much. Thank you so much. All right, and thank you for joining us, Derek. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you, sir. Take care and God bless. God bless. And I should say for uh, clarification purposes that they did unofficially set a new world record at the Palestra that day. Uh, the prior world record for largest mascot dance was 134. Uh, they had 138, so uh, they just barely broke it. Uh, right now the video is being reviewed by the Guinness judges, so we should know in a month or so uh, whether an official new world record has been set. So um, keeping claws crossed for that. Well, that's going to bring to a close this edition of The Bear Facts. Uh, just a reminder that you can uh, subscribe to us on YouTube, uh, channel name The Pocket Ducks. Uh, that's also our Twitter handle, so you can uh, follow us there as well. And if you don't mind a little extra grouchiness in your, in your day and uh, would like to follow me personally, uh, I have my own Twitter account at Mr. Vanderbear. Yes, that's Mr. Vanderbear to you. Uh, once again, huge thanks to uh, Derek Zinser for being our guest today. And as always, thank you for spending part of your day with us as well. So until next time, everybody, I'm Bronson Vanderbeer. Thank you for watching The Bear Facts.